Hi, I'm Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today we're going to be talking about hybrid orbitals and their importance in especially organic chemistry. So, um, having said that, let's kick off by looking at um, a carbon atom. And specifically, let's have a look at the valence electron configuration of carbon, okay? Um, the full electron configuration of carbon, obviously, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, like so. Now, the valence electron configuration, remember, the highest value of n, your principal quantum number, is going to be 2s2, 2p2. So we've got four valence electrons in a carbon atom that should be available for bonding. Okay, so let's draw that on an energy level diagram. So here's your 2s orbital and here are your 2p orbitals. Okay, ground state electron configuration of carbon, 2s2, let's pop two electrons in there, and 2p2, remember according to Hund's rule, we put the uh, two electrons in the p orbitals in separate orbitals so as to give our maximum value of spin. Now let's look at that and say, okay, um, what do we got here? We have got two unpaired electrons, only two unpaired electrons. And that, you might think, is going to make it uh, difficult to form any more than two bonds. If you've only got two unpaired electrons, you can imagine these guys being involved in bonding, but chances are these guys are not going to be involved in bonding. So what you probably should know is that this is kind of at odds with um, normal carbon-containing molecules. You all know, hopefully, that carbon generally forms four bonds. So how's it going to do that if it's only got two unpaired electrons? Hmm, that's question number one. Question number two that we need to also answer is, well, let's have a look at probably your simplest carbon-containing molecule, and this is methane. Okay, CH4, there it is, that is a tetrahedral molecule. Being tetrahedral, that means that all of your bond angles are around about 109 and a half degrees. And um, the hydrogens are arranged in a tetrahedral fashion around the carbon atom. Tetrahedral fashion, okay, that's also going to be difficult to replicate uh, given the ground state electron configuration of carbon because, as we just said, what have we got in terms of valence electrons? We've got 2s and we've got 2p. Your 2s orbital there, your 2p orbitals there. What do your 2p orbitals look like? They look like dumbbells, don't they? They are three mutually perpendicular orbitals looking something like that. Your s orbital is a sphere, spherical. How then do you make tetrahedral from a spherical and three dumbbells that are arranged mutually perpendicular to each other? How do we do that? And how do we get four bonds? Okay, so those are the questions that we need to answer. And the way that we're going to answer these questions is we're going to use things called hybrid orbitals. And with hybrid orbitals, we're going to be able to get our four bonds. So we're going to get four unpaired electrons and we are going to be able to get a tetrahedral arrangement uh, around the carbon atom and thus replicate the geometry of the methane molecule. How do we go about doing that? Well, Hybrid, what does hybrid mean? Okay, you all probably know hybrid in the terms of uh, cars, let's say. And a hybrid car runs obviously on both petrol and electricity. It's kind of a mixture of both things. Hybrid orbitals are no different. They are mixtures, essentially. Let's start off with our ground state orbitals here for the carbon atom, the 2s and the 3 2ps. Now the 2s is of lower energy than the 3 2ps, and what we're going to do is we are going to hybridize, hybridize these orbitals. Now essentially 
what this is equivalent to is taking a single s orbital and taking three p orbitals, adding them together and dividing by four. Essentially, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but basically that's what you're doing. You're taking this orbital here, these three orbitals here, mixing them up and dividing by four, and when you do that, what you then get are four equivalent orbitals, okay? And we call these hybrid orbitals. And because these hybrid orbitals are made up of a single s orbital and three p orbitals, then we're going to call these s p3, hybrid orbitals. And we get four of them. Okay, so now we've got four sp3 hybrid orbitals. That's, that's sounding a little bit better than this was over here. So now let's put electrons in these orbitals. So remember, our ground state carbon atom had the electron configuration 2s2 in terms of valence electrons, 2p2. And when we used this particular formulation, we find that we've only got two unpaired electrons. We can sort of only form two bonds there. However, once we hybridize these orbitals, what we then get is four equivalent sp3 orbitals and so, if we're going to put four electrons in here, by Hund's rule, we've got to put four electrons in like so, okay? So we put those four electrons in. Now what have we got? We've got four equivalent orbitals, and each of them contains one electron. So now we can form four bonds. And, even better still, <clears throat> What's the best way of arranging four things around a central atom? Okay, how do you get uh, things furthest apart from each other if you've got four of them around a central atom? And the answer to that is a tetrahedral arrangement. That puts things as far apart as they can possibly be in space. So what we've got now, by hybridizing these orbitals, number one, We've got four unpaired electrons, therefore we can form four bonds. Number two, those orbitals are arranged in a tetrahedral arrangement, and therefore that's going to um, explain, I guess, or reproduce the geometry of your methane molecule. Now let's have a look at that, I guess, uh, in terms of some pictures. It's all very well drawing energy level diagrams and everything. But let's show you what's sort of going on here uh, with this diagram of the hybridization process, okay? So what we've done in forming sp3 hybrid orbitals is taken a single s orbital here, and we're mixing, we're mixing it together with three of these p orbitals here, okay? So a single s orbital with three p orbitals, and if you do that, this is what you get. Now remember, these are essentially just mathematical functions. They're regions in space, okay? And what we're doing, the equivalent thing of what we're doing is we're taking this orbital and we're plopping it right there in the middle of that. That means this lobe here, the blue colored lobes are going to add to each other. The blue and the pink colored lobes are going to subtract from each other. They're going to undergo destructive interference. And so you end up with four orbitals now that look a little bit like this, like p orbitals gone a bit wonky. Now, if you're taking four of these things and putting them around a central atom, then this is the arrangement that you get. You get tetrahedral here, as shown in this diagram. Now again, this diagram, we've taken the little lobe, we've just forgotten that because it does sort of complicate things, but essentially what you've got now is a tetrahedral arrangement of four sp3 hybrid orbitals. Now, we can make methane from that now as shown in this diagram. So here now are your four sp3 hybrid orbitals. Again, tetrahedrally arranged. Now, each of these guys contains a single electron. Now these can now overlap with a hydrogen 1s orbital that contains a single electron. Here, 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 and here. And they can overlap in a bonding fashion and you end up now with a methane molecule, CH4, 
where the orbitals around the central carbon are tetrahedrally arranged, you've formed four single bonds here, CH bond, a CH bond, a CH bond, a CH bond, and you've now got your methane molecule. Tetrahedral, four bonds around the carbon, and we've done all that simply by making hybrid orbitals, starting off with our atomic orbitals on carbon, mixing them up, and dividing by four, and getting four sp3 hybrid orbitals. Okay, now, um, this is really good for describing uh, carbon containing compounds that are only made up of single bonds, okay? CH single bonds, or even CC single bonds, we can describe the geometries of organic molecules as long as there's no multiple bonds in there. We can use the sp3 terminology to um, explain the geometry of, of pretty much any carbon containing compound that doesn't have any multiple bonds. So that's pretty good. Starting from where we did, where we had uh, a spherical orbital and three dumbbell shaped orbitals at 90 degrees to each other. Now we've got four sp3 hybrid orbitals, which are tetrahedral, each contain one electron, you can form your four bonds, and they're four equivalent bonds, which is what we're after. So this is a great example of a uh, theory replicating experiment. Uh, the fancy name for this type of theory is valence bond theory. Uh, this was developed by a great scientist by the name of Linus Pauling in around about the 1930s of last century, there or thereabouts. Pauling, one of the few people to win two Nobel Prizes, he won a Nobel Prize in chemistry, he also won a Nobel Prize, prize excuse me, in peace. Uh, you should read about him, he was a very, very brave man, stood up to the US government, and that's what got him his uh, Nobel Peace Prize. But that's another story uh, for another day. So in the meantime, uh, that's SP3 hybridization. In the next video, we're going to see what we do about multiple bonds and how we can talk about hybridization uh, for those types of molecules. Okay, so until then, uh, we will see you in the next video.